Tonight, I want to invite up to the platform our four presbyters. Let me just highlight them real quick. Uh, weighing in at 155, <laughs> the Razorback of Arkansas, Wayne Drain. Come on up. And then from LifeGate Church in Omaha, Nebraska, our dear friend, Les Beecham. Come on up, Les. And the, the mother voice of prophecy uh, all the way from South Lake, Texas is our dear friend, Lisa. Come on up. And this is Tom Lane's daughter. I don't know if you guys know that. Come on up. And then last but not least, uh, uh, my brother from another, oh, no, what? What's up? Oh, oh yeah, John, I'm sorry. So never mind. Uh, well, I'll, I'll recognize them anyways. Jane just saved me. But John Perminsky, stand up. Let everybody wave at you. And uh, at the end, when we're doing Words and Season, John will jump in. But we gave all of the presbyters one service off. And uh, so this is his. Enjoy this service off. The only, the only service off that we didn't give is Wayne. And so we just, we work him extra hard when he's here. So uh, it's, it's going to be great. So John, enjoy your time. But uh, our first candidate couple that we want to in invite up is Jeff and Hannah Parshall. Would you guys come on up? <laughs> come on up. Can we get some keys? It's a little, it's, yeah, there you go. That, that feel, oh, yeah, that's good. I like that. Well, well, chopsticks. That's good. Keep at it. One of these days you'll learn how to play really good, Caleb. Now that we've quenched the spirit, would you guys just extend your hands towards this couple? Father, we just pray and thank you for Jeff and Hannah. And we pray that tonight, Lord, that you would speak clearly accurately and Father in a way that just builds them up and strengthens them. We know you love them. You have so many things you want to share over them. We just set them before you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. How are you guys? Good. Well, it's really fun to finally have a name to go with our couple number three. And so, Hannah, I'm going to start with you. Um, I heard the words, how precious you are. You tend to be everyone's favorite. There is nothing negative about you, and everyone is so drawn to you. You aren't prideful, pretentious, and you don't seek attention. You don't demand things to be your way. You just can't help that you actually have the best ideas. Um, you avoid conflict and don't want there to be any tension. You have sometimes wished that you could just live in a bubble where everything is good and everyone is nice. You have such a gift of hospitality. You have such intentionality in the way you serve people and how you tend to their needs. There is something so refreshing when people enter your home. People feel relaxed and they feel served. It's almost like a retreat for some people when they come in your home. I saw a desire in you for a greater manifestation of miracles and asking God to increase your faith to walk in more of an extreme willingness to be obedient to his prompting so you can witness those miracles. I see a mini revival on you. You have an evangelistic heart. You are burdened by all the loss you are seeing around you and the heaviness that everyone is carrying. I see a creativity increasing in you for how you deposit hope and encouragement. And I don't know if you like to paint or have that creative aspect, but I saw it through painting that you'll be displaying words of hope and encouragement that can be seen on a daily basis as a reminder of the truth of God's heart for them. You are a ray of sunshine that is able to break through the clouds on a rainy day. There have been um, a time where you felt covered by the storm clouds and tried to find a possible light in that dark storm. You are a hope that the sun will come out again, 
that the storms won't stay forever and that there will be beautiful blue skies behind the storm clouds. You are truly the kind of friend that everyone needs in their life. One who will inspire them to keep going, comfort them when times get tough, not judge them in their journey, and will cheer them on when they step into the destiny God has for them. You are truly the best. Bless you. So Jeff, when I was praying for you, this is very strange because I've never heard it like this, but I heard your name being announced like that of a game show. And I heard them calling saying, here is your pastor, Jeff. And I'm not sure if this is God showing the kind of heart that you have or confirming something regarding staffing. But I heard you're a good balance between fun and serious. And you have a healthy view of how, on how to put boundaries up in your life. You walk in obedient to God, but you don't over-spiritualize everything. You make being a Christian interesting to people. You show how Christians know to have fun, and you would be someone good for our youth. You draw them away from the temptations of the world, respect how God shows them how to respect the views of, of dating and how to walk with integrity. You would also be great at helping run camps. I also saw you running events, conferences that are hosted by this house. You know how to keep things flowing, make sure the theme is carried out through um, out the conference and, all the, the, and make sure that all the details are um, thought through and make sure that everyone comes and gets a need met. It is important to you to not miss the mark. You are important about leaving some kind of imprint. You give of yourself a lot and do many things for other people expecting nothing in return. You are truly a selfless man. There is something or someone that has been a bit of a distraction for you and is causing your focus to be a little elsewhere or distracted from where God is wanting it to be. Um, maybe possibly even a friendship, but I would pray about that. And you need to turn your focus around, move in the direction God is calling you, and let go of the things that don't seem to be lining up with where God has you going next. I also see a season coming where you'll be digging deeper into the study of the word, possibly for future teachings. It will require intentional focus and time set aside to be able to make the most out of your study. I also even saw some possible travel to maybe somewhere like Israel. Your studies will make the scriptures come alive to people and will help people understand the application in a more personal way. You are a great teacher. You are a great instructor, and you will see that gift expanding in the days ahead. Bless you. How are y'all? This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> I just saw you as a fun couple, hearts full of praise and gratefulness. You're serious about equipping others. You're serious about raising up a generation, but you're just fun. You make following Jesus attractive, and I love that about you. I don't even know you, but I would steal you if I were still a pastor. <laughs> you are a front row couple who the Holy Spirit called forward from the back row. Your, your start was rapid like a meteor, then something happened, and you were on the back row for a while. And God's called you up to the front row. You went from observing to serving. You carry the vision of this house like goodwill ambassadors who represent well. Building up God's people is a common calling that you both share. Ministry of edification and comfort combined when you two minister together. You're building a house of peace and a house of worship and a house, and a house that children love. Jeff, I hear a line from the title of a Tom Petty song. No, I won't back down. <laughs> this could be your theme song. You are a stick, stick to it till you do it guy relentless in your obedience to whatever you feel the Lord would ask of you. The Holy Spirit seems to be expanding the tent pegs beyond your comfort zone. And that's, that's a stretch for you because your comfort zone is out there. A, se a season to pioneer, not to settle. You're an ideas guy, creative, 
love to explore new things. Failure doesn't hurt you as much as fear causing you to stop trying. Gift of leadership is strong. You inspire men to be steadfast in service and to respect godly authority. A man's man with a call to train young men in character and gift. And I see that you've been a team leader since you were a youth. Uh, Jeff will do it. Let's let Jeff lead that. Jeff can do it. I've heard that all your life. You don't seek it or promote yourself. Others just recognize that gift in you and, they, and it's easy to follow you. You make following Jesus fun. You are a run to the battle guy, a faithful soldier in God's army of love. Just raise up the young ones and train them to run to the battle with you and you'll know a life of adventure. Hannah, secure, steady as she goes, woman of God. You weren't always secure. God just showed up one day and just said, you know, Hannah, you're okay. I love you just like you are. And it was a liberating day for you. You serve as an anchor when your husband and family begin to sail the ship too fast or too soon. You can also handle the rudder and steer in direction in keeping with what the Holy Spirit has spoken. I hear you saying, Jeff, remember, God spoke this. Come back. Dial it down a little. And, and, and you do it kindly and sweetly, but it's important that you do it. Especially when hard winds of adversity blow, your hands need to be with his on the rudder. You're one secure enough to serve the servants as they equip the people of God. You often hold up the hands of others when they begin to hang down. Strong enough to speak truth to, in it, to the enemy's lies. You're passionate about standing up for the little ones. I saw you surrounded by young ones and releasing creative expressions into them and emitting out through them in the years to come. You're going to have many, many spiritual sons and daughters. Do you have children? How many? Two? Is the second one? What is, is it female? She's, she's like you. And she's, uh, she's going to walk beside you all of her life. Now, it's cool with the first one, but there was a battle for the second one, and she's, she's with you. She's a mini you. Pour yourself into her. You're a woman of relationship, loyal and true. And I saw if Jeff is a kite, you hold the string. An excellent wife and partner, a great organizer, and hospitality, hospitality given with excellence is just the way you live. You're a great couple. to see the various dimensions of your magnificent lives. It is a wonder for us. I want you to know that. So many beautiful dimensions. Something that the Lord said to me about you, Jeff, is he's never forgotten what he used to be, what fear was like, what sin was like. You haven't forgotten. And uh, as I was praying for you, I saw seeds being sown and I saw more fields to be cleared and tilled and sown into. And the Lord said, he is a vital part, they are, of where Radiant is going. Further fields to be sown into. And what came to my mind was a statue, a bronze statue that's 19 feet tall, which is about as high as from here to the ceiling, on the top of Nebraska's capital. And the name of the statue is the sower. And it is seven and a half tons heavy. That's a big foundation. And it's the image of Nebraska. He has a huge bag here and his arm is out and he's sowing. And what this represents is that his hand is extended to cast the seeds of life into the wind, which was the traditional way of sowing back then. And the Lord said, this man is a sower. And he has a desperate heart for those far from God. You've never forgotten, as I mentioned, what it was like to not have God and know God. And you have a heart for the lost and want to do strategic things to win greater numbers. A heart for the church as well, because it's his greatest sowing mechanism. 
You know how church functions somehow. You've seen its strengths, but you also know its weaknesses. And lots of people ditch the church when they see its weaknesses, but you've decided to press in. You have leadership gifting, Jeff. Systems and structures don't intimidate you and they don't bore you. You see them as necessary for things to move forward and be sustained in momentum. And you don't see strategy as unspiritual. Some people do, but you don't. You see it's practical. You actually see better ways of sowing than casting to the wind. Called to bring order, better strategy, selecting participants, and a much greater yield. You're a pioneer and an effective sower into the future things that you'll be a part of to see the growth of. You're in the right place at the right time with the right gifts. And then I heard Joseph, a Joseph anointing to do what? Remember, he oversaw the sowing, the reaping, the harvesting, the preserving, the distributing of a living harvest that preserve many. And I believe you have the ability to oversee sowing and reaping, harvesting, preserving, distributing. And the Lord says, get ready. You'll be essential in the coming revival. I also sense that you need to make a Nazarite vow and cut your hair off. Actually, I say that to anyone who has hair, so be at peace. Yeah. There was a movie back in 2011 entitled Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Very interesting title. And it was a code name made up of vocations to describe the mission of a veteran British agent. And I was like, Lord, why are you giving that to me? And he said to me, daughter, mother, missionary host. And he says, this is my beloved daughter to whom I, in whom I am well pleased. And you need to hear that very deeply. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. It was difficult for you to believe fully and accept completely at one time. As it is for, for many, many people, several events in your life have convinced you that your identity really is Hannah, beloved daughter. And you need to receive that. Not only daughter, though, not for what you do, but for who you are. You have been called as a mother to your own two. Right there, okay. You're an example of godly mothering more than you're aware of, and you'll continue to be. It's really simple. The way you do it is you just love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You love your husband more than you love yourself, and you love your children enough to help them focus on love and obedience to God above their own happiness, which we know is the only means to happiness. You are a tremendous mom. Receive this above your self-criticism and perceived failures and shortcomings. But you're also a missionary. You have a heart willing to go wherever, do whatever God wants you to do. Your heart breaks for those without hope, without truth and salvation. Your heart beats in sync with his to be a part of more and more ways to reach people with the good news of Jesus. I see you loving people, children, youth in particular, who are at great risk or suffered great loss. A vital partnership with your husband in the explanation and the extension of radiant churches and fields. You have a future here in the expansion of this movement. He says this, keep praying, keep trusting, and then finally, keep hosting the presence of God in your home, among your children, in your marriage, and in this place. God set his hand on you all. You are a stellar couple. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey. Jeff, I love to love it. I love to love it. Those are great words. And for those of you who don't know Jeff and Hannah, uh, Jeff is the director for Radiant School of Worship, and they both together are an incredible worship duo that moved here from upstate New York. They pour their lives into the prayer room and to our musicians and students and really do help fulfill the vision of creating a resting place for the Lord. So we're, we're, so, we're such big fans of you. And uh, we love you guys. Would you just extend your hands towards them?
And I want to invite the presbyters to come over here and, uh, and circle around them and just lay hands on them as we just confirm and solidify these words. Father, we just thank you for this couple. We bless them. And we thank you that they are the right couple in the right place with the right gifts at the right time. And Lord, we thank you for the seeds that they sow and the impact that they make. Lord, let these words solidify and settle deep down into their hearts and souls. And may they bear fruit in the years to come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bless you guys. <clears throat> so our next candidate is a single lady, a single young lady. Where's, where's Erica Sudeikis? Come on up here, Eric. Erica. Come on down, Erica. And Father, we just thank you tonight for Erica, and we thank you that you're going to have an opportunity, Father, to speak over her. So we just bless her, pray for ears to hear all that you're saying and speaking over her life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are compelling in the Spirit. I can't even begin to tell you, you have caught my attention at least four times today. And when I see you, I see a general who has great authority and protects many, many people. But then I remember, I think I had a word for you last time. You and you were busy doing things and you said, just a minute. And I mean, when you, and I said, I'll, I'll wait as long as I need to. Do you remember that? And, and, and then I had a word for you and I have the same sense. You are crucial in this house. You, uh, like a mother hen, you cover many, many, many people. And you don't have a security dealy on your ear, but you are part of the security of this house and uh, consistently making this a secure place. Uh, if I could recruit you, I would take you home tomorrow morning to Omaha, Nebraska, because I think that you are an anchor person in this house. You're deeply loved. You have the ability of 10 men. I'm serious. This is just incredible. <laughs> gift of administration, gift of strategic direction. People love to follow you, and they'll follow you anywhere. But the anywhere that you want to go is wherever Jesus wants you to go. I've never done this, but I, I want to salute you. <laughs> and I thank God that you're in this house because this is a better place because of you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hey, Erica, you're pretty awesome. You are. I heard a phrase, uh, actionable faith for you. That means you're willing and able to be, to, it's willing and able to be done or acted upon. People say she's a get it done woman who has little patience for death by committee efforts. People that just talk the talk, but never seem to walk the walk. I just hear you saying, uh, lead, follow, or get out of the way. We're moving. You are a solutions finder who values relevant information that results in action. Work capacity is large. Your leadership gift is genuine and expanding. I heard Matthew eleven twelve as a motivating verse for you. And from time to time, and from the time of John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful people have been seizing it. You are a forceful woman in a culture that says women don't be forceful. But you're forceful in a kingdom perspective. The enemy's trying to raise up a different kind of perspective that's, that's mean and, and hurtful, but that's not you. You're on the cusp of a carp dim, seize the day, timely moment. That phrase means to make actionable, available, opportune moments, even as you live your life to the full. Gift of discernment is combining with a word of knowledge and wise counsel is going to flow in problem solving situations. You're going to know in a moment what needs to be done. Gift of loving administration and executive capacity is big. You make this house look good. 
and you all the workings to make service around here excellent. I just want to tell you, not many people can pull off that hair color the way you do. I mean, you truly make it look cool. I don't know what my husband would say if I went home with a haircut like that, but you, you just make it look really cool. Um, Erica, I heard the word strong, courageous, tough. When hard times have come, you haven't shrinked back. You believe that it is God who gets the final say, not man and not even doctors. Your optimism is not foolish, but it is rooted in a faith that God can do the impossible. And Erica, you won't stop believing that he can do it all. You listen intently to what people are saying, and you look to get to the root of what they are going through in order to be able to help them. I saw you as a, someone who would be a good counselor. I heard today is the day for your nudge. Do it, take the next step. Don't be hesitant to move in the next season that God's calling you into. You can trust the wisdom and advice from the leadership in this house. Um, you are meant to be a trailblazer, to go into uncharted territory, to take on things that have never been done. I saw you leading a team of people you were actively leading them, not doing it through instruction. You guys were on the move. I heard get some hiking boots and a backpack. I saw you drawing from some of your experiences from your childhood that will help you be the leader that is needed for this adventure. I also heard don't be afraid to open up your heart to let others in to help you. You are independent and can sometimes be guarded against the wrong people. Relationships can be hard. Trust that even during the hard ones, God had a purpose. He was working through it. And I see this next season, things coming into an alignment for you. And I see a passion growing to be more willing to what you will say yes to. There's gonna be some cool short stories that you're gonna be able to share and they're going to be collected by one experience at a time. And I also heard, be looking for the prophetic to be stirring in you and for ways that God will open the door for this gift to be used. I heard, write down what you think you heard the Lord say. Drop those notes of encouragement to who you feel like the Lord is nudging you to speak to. And you will see people come alive because they will feel seen by God through a simple act of obedience, through the words of encouragement that are in your heart to share to them. So bless you, Erica. I want to invite the presbyters to come. So for those of you who don't know Erica, Erica is Pastor John's uh, administrative assistant, and she's really like the campus mom here at the Richland location. And uh, she is the mother hen. And she is bold and courageous. She brings me coffee on Sunday mornings, which I'm eternally grateful for. And uh, she really is a gift to this body. And so, Erica, we bless you. I want to have Pastor John pray over you. And Father, we just thank you for Erica. We thank you for the gift that she really is to this house. And God, we just confirm the words that were spoken over her, the prophetic unctions and edification that are building her up into what you have for her. God, we thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And God, what you're doing in her and what you're doing through her is powerful and it is a gift to this house, God. And so we honor her. We honor the season that she's in and we honor the things that you are already preparing for her, God. And we thank you that you're giving her the grace and the strength and the ability to walk through the doors that you're opening, to walk into the opportunities. And God, I just thank you for bringing her here. I thank you for her incredible servant heart and her leadership. And we honor her and thank you for her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I would tell Pastor Les, he can have Jeff, but he can't have Erica. So. <laughs> Ah, it's awesome. Okay, our next couple uh, is Scott and Sam Mazar. Would you come on up? Yeah. 
And guys, while they're coming up here, let me just coach you a little bit. When you hear something, if you know, if you know who's up here and the, the prophetic team is speaking words and it sounds right on, come on, amen them. Don't be afraid to clap. Don't be afraid to cheer. Uh, because not only is it going to encourage them, but it's going to encourage the, the prophetic speakers as well. And then, uh, and you can also take some of those words for yourself as well. So uh, welcome, guys. Let me pray over you. Father, thank you for this couple. Thank you for this moment and this time. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come and speak over them. They've been preparing their hearts, and Lord, you've been preparing this moment. So we just right now focus our hearts in to hear everything that you have on your heart to speak over them in Jesus name. Amen. You guys are clean. You are. It's rare that you see this, but you're clean inside and out. Wow. I've shot a bow for 40 years. And the key with a bow is that your anchor arm needs to be immovable. And when you draw your bow and you release your arrow, you're to not drop your arm until you see the arrow hit the target. Because you'll telegraph and you'll actually do that to look and you'll miss the target. Why am I saying this? I'm, I'm on the airplane. I'm coming here. And Scott, I'll start with you. Then Sam, I'll go to you. Okay. Um, the Lord said decisive, decisive. This man is decisive, firm, resolute, purposeful, a man of vision and decisiveness. And it's like God revealed vision for your life, for your family, in hints and little seeds that he showed you in your early years, even when you were a boy. If you were to look back, you'd be like, that was a seed there and that was a seed there. And you're living toward it with resolve and with a firm, resolute, decisive commitment to trust God no matter what. And so I've been sent as one of the confirmations of your vision that you can trust him. And this is one of the confirmations. Next, he needs you both to know he is your provision and he's heard your prayers. He's seen your pleas, your resolute faith. And he said, this summer is going to be a summer of surprises and sudden positive changes for you. <laughs> so I don't know if that means anything, but that's what's going to happen. And uh, this vision that he gave you is a significant part of what drew you to one another, I believe, to your marriage and even now to this radiant people. And the way he brought it to me was it's a shared vision, a burden for a revived church and a transformed culture, a revived church and a transformed culture. And you believe it's not too late for either. You actually believe that. You've determined to pray, worship, work, and do whatever it takes to welcome revival in your individual lives, in your marriage, and in your children. Do you have any children? Okay. Then revival's coming that way. It's like you, you both are a tarmac that says, presence of God, come land here. And you mean it sincerely. You're a man of your word. You do what you say. Leaders can count on you. She loves that about you. When you say it, you'll do it. It was said of Jesus that he set his face like a flint toward Jerusalem. Your face is sent, is set with a divisive, uh, sorry, decisive heart. It's set like a flint. And you know what's on the end of an arrow? A flint toward God's calling and God's vision. You will see it fulfilled. Count on it. Sam, wow. Radiant countenance is what he said to me. Radiant countenance. She's always smiling. I don't know if people have said that. It's because your heart is smiling and your countenance is the state of the spirit in you that comes through your eyes and your face. And yours is a life-filled, radiant, beautiful reflection of Jesus' face pouring out unconditional love with no condemnation and only compassion. You know, we pray, uh, lift your countenance up upon us. And so you have his countenance 
to look at you is to look at what Jesus looks like. Your countenance is a gift that God gives other people of his heart through you. You love people. And it's so precious. The scripture said that we with unveiled faces all reflect the glory of the Lord are being transformed into this same image from glory to glory from the Lord who is the spirit. And he's pouring out of you. That is you. You're an expression of the vision of a revival culture. I don't know if it's a vision that you share that has anything to do with the downtown location. I don't know if you've talked about that. I don't know if you've thought about that. But there is a pioneering aspect of who you all are. Yours is the DNA needed and desired in the start of kingdom ventures. And what's needed in a church is the showcase of your countenance, your vision, your resolve. The Lord has revealed to me that your smiling and rejoicing heart didn't come easy, but that it came at a very high cost. And you chose to trust God and believe him through and beyond several significant losses that you've endured. And God says, I know all about them and I love you. Before you were married and since you've been together, you've experienced losses. I was supposed to ask, do you have an um, occurring health issue that you battle? Anything to do with your digestion. Okay, well, then we're just trusting that that's for someone else. He's come today because he loves you so much, and he's letting you know, along with his vision, he's looking forward to fulfilling his purposes in you and through you. Love you both. This church is in a season of moving mountains, needing to move mountains. And God's giving you mountain-moving faith. You may not feel like it, but I, I really see that sort of faith rising up in you to where you actually speak to mountains, be thou removed, and they're moved. You're a gift to this church. I saw that a family of worshipers, uh, you're a family of worshipers who highly value God's presence. You understand that only in his presence is found the fullness of joy. And you understand by revelation and experience that healing is found in his presence and the spirit of prophecy is released. You're going to prophesy the walls down one of these days, young lady. Uh, it's going to be good. Words in season will increase as you too make yourself available to care for people in need of encouragement. You're drawn to discouraged people, not to just say they're there, but to say, no, here, let's go up. Let's get out of this place. You call people higher. Scott, you are a storyteller, a good news bringer, a gatherer, a warrior who carries a song of the Lord in your heart. You've learned uh, the art of encouraging yourself in the Lord. There have been times that you had, had a hard time finding encouragement, and God taught you how to encourage yourself in the Lord. When you pray in the Spirit, it's powerful. Things move when you pray in the Spirit. Good communicator. I hear sermons, songs, poetry, and stories being given to tell the story of Jesus and his people. Creative, intuitive. You can hear from God clearly and often. I've got one caution for you. Don't let the mind sweats cause you to doubt yourself or become double-minded. Yeah. Worry doesn't look good on you. Just let it go. Let it go. Be confident in the Lord, but be humble as a thankful servant. And be bold to prophesy, to say and to do what you hear and see. I hear real words of prophecy given in non-religious language. You make hearing from God accessible to the non-churched as well as those in the community of God's people. You are a, you're in a period of transition. The timing seems kind of funky. But God's timing is always perfect. And it's always better than our timing. Sam. I love your name, Sam. I see you creating environments and safe places where learning and discovery takes place. Uh, you are a revealer of things. God gives you revelation. And he reveals things to you that just make sense to you, but are revelation to other people. I hear people saying, Sam, just she's got something from God. And you do. You're a hands-on teacher and mentor that God uses to prepare rising generations to discover God's destiny and purpose for their lives. I see you as an imparter of hope, 
a permission giver to chase heaven's dreams. You are a destiny identifier and able to impart to others gifts you've been given by teaching, mentoring, and the laying on of hands. And your smile is a gift that lights up the room. Every room you walk into, your smile lights it up. Uh, your smile has been difficult to give at times. There's a period of sadness uh, that God just came and just healed you. And he just rubbed his hand across your face and gave you your smile back. You remember the day that happened. A spiritual heritage flowing into you is going to flow out from you into the coming generations. Uh, that circle is not going to be broken in you. Uh, it's going to go on. And I heard this. God's got you. He is absolutely trustworthy. You can trust him. Remember that prayer is original research and uncharted territory. In this season, prayer and worship is your jam. It's the air you breathe. And it'll be yours to impart to others. I hear young girls come and saying, can I pray with you and will you pray with me? You're a strong woman of God. You're going to do great things for the glory of Jesus. Do you have any room for some more? This has been good. I may have stolen a few. You know, he said ricochet words. I decided to take some of yours for my own. They were good. Um, Sam, I heard you have a deep love for people, but you don't have any time for any nonsense. You steward your time well. Good manners are important to you. Teaching the importance of respecting those in authority over you is of high value to you. And you value to help uh, people be well balanced in their life and a healthy understanding of how to make the most of what they've been given. You take care of others well. And if you don't feel like you can do something well or give it your full attention, you would just rather not do it. You are... um, Attentive to detail, creative, so good at putting the finishing touches on something, you give it the wow factor. There is something so sweet about the way that you worship. You think about the words of the song, you feel the emotions from the song, and you get lost in the presence when you worship. It is so pure and so genuine. The Lord sees and knows your heart, and you can stop the conversations in your mind that have made you doubt yourself or question if your intentions are pure. I heard push out the negative, focus on the positive. I also heard the word mediator. I see the Lord using you to help restore and mend broken relationships. Your voice will be used to speak against the injustices that you see happening. I see your voice being used to help women's shelters speak against sex trafficking and help to fight on behalf of abandoned children. You will help be a vessel that will bring hope, healing, and helping them to become whole again. You have the right amount of compassion mixed with a little feistiness that will get the job done. I heard belief is a high strength of yours and realize it is a gift that the Lord has given you. Don't shy away from standing firm in what you believe because it will help people raise their own standards, rise to a higher level of work ethic, and not become overwhelmed by the pressures of this world. You will show them with just a little bit of passion, some drive, and some perseverance that they too can make a difference and help people just one situation at a time. But that's the kind of motivator and inspiration that you're going to be. And so I just thank you for what you're committed to do to help build God's kingdom. Scott. Scott, I heard funny, good sense of humor, but it's like a dry sense of humor. Um, You aren't necessarily the loudest in the room or seek to get the attention but you are one who should be speaking up because God, you have great wisdom. You have great understanding of what it takes for things to work well, how to be efficient and effective with the things you have. You are gifted with great vision and have some ideas that will help take this church to the next level. I saw, especially in the area of outreach. 
You also are a man of prayer. You know how to pray fire down from heaven. You, your prayers stir in others to pray with an earnest and for them to believe that God can do even more. You um, are called to be the message of hope that can only be found in Jesus. You help them see the joy that there is in following Jesus. People ask why, and your respond is, well, why not? I see men's ministry over you. I saw you calling men to embrace their responsibility that God has given them and to be the leader in their home that honors Jesus in every way. I saw that there was a season where you felt like a lot seemed out of control. It was like the wind was blowing and you were trying to hold on to what you could to keep something from not feeling like it was blowing away. But I saw things beginning to settle down and the wind to stop blowing and everything to kind of become a little less crazy. There will be something that there will be some things that don't look the same and some things that weren't supposed to go with you in this next season. But don't be phased by what looks different or what you didn't plan for in the way that it turned out. Trust God. Trust that God is in it. Find peace to help you go forward and you will begin to see the fruit that will come forward in this next season. One last thing, I saw this image of you Um, holding like an electric guitar, but what was interesting was you weren't playing the instrument. It was like you were just tapping on it with your finger. And you were providing the pace at which the song should go. And what I believe the Lord is showing through that vision is that you help keep things on track. You help keep them steady without trying to get ahead of God's timing. You have a big responsibility that you carry, but you also are tender. You are tender to not rush the things of God. And that truly makes you a carrier of God's presence wherever you go. And it makes people hungry for more of what you have. Bless you both. Hi, guys. So, introduce Sam to you. Sam uh, was the mastermind and general manager just until recently of Matchhead, our coffee shop downtown. And uh, she did a phenomenal job getting it off the ground, all the uh, design of it. She did an amazing job and uh, is now going to be giving her attention to becoming a mom. And Scott is our children's pastor here at our Richland location. And both of them, on top of everything else that they do, just both graduate with master's degrees. So, I mean, well done, guys. I want to invite the presbyters to come over. Is John, Pastor John in here? Pastor Sonny, come on up. This is Pastor Sonny's son. So Pastor Sonny, who's over our network of churches, I'm gonna have you come and Pastor John come. Uh, Sonny, would you just pray over them? Scott, you are my son whom I love. (laughs) With you, I'm well pleased. And I hear the Father saying that as well. Sam, I thank you, uh, thank God for you and for the unique gifts that he's placed in you. Lord, I thank you that your thoughts for this couple go beyond even their own comprehension. I thank you for the generational blessing that remains on them to be kingdom advancers. So Lord, we say yes and amen to everything that you have just spoken over them. And we seal it to their lives that they would go forth and bear much fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. All right, let's all stand up for a a moment. We're going to shift gears in the service. And now I'm going to invite John Preminsky to get off the bench and to join the other three. And we're going to move into a time of prophetic words and season That means that they're just going to be walking around. God's going to be highlighting or has already highlighted and giving spontaneous words tonight to individuals. And so before we do that, though, would you just, again, let's just renew and reset our hearts. Let's just pray. Can we just take a moment? Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come, Holy Spirit, and speak. Jesus, we glorify you. Father, we worship you. We recognize that this moment that we're in is an opportunity for you 
to step into the living room, Father, and to speak to your children, speak to us. We welcome you and we welcome your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Back here. What's your name? Uh, Katie. Are you all a couple? Yes. Married? Yes. That's good. That's really good. Uh, I see that you've been asking, seeking, and knocking on the door of heaven for an answer, a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough. And I believe God will honor your persistence like he honored the persistent widow. He heard you the first time you asked. He began opening the door the first time you knocked. And he rewards those who diligently seek him. You've not been wasting time or marking time. You've been in step with the Holy Spirit in the place of waiting. Waiting is not passive. It's not passive at all. It's active. So be at peace. A breakthrough in August, an open door in October. Rewards to celebrate at Thanksgiving. In the meantime, keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking with hope in your heart and praise in your spirit. God is faithful. You can count on him. Gentleman back here with a short sleeve yellow shirt. As we were standing there, what's your name? Michael. As we were standing there, I just heard the Lord say that music is foundational to you. Um, quality of music is important to you. You have a you have a critical ear. Don't know if you're a music technician of some kind. But you, you have that kind of ear, and I believe it's why you gravitate the t to the soundboard and why you sit by it. Um, but I just believe there's something uh, very strong about your ear, about your, the quality of music, how you see music, how you hear music, and um, God's just kind of highlighting you today. And I don't know if you're used here. I don't know how regularly you attend here. Okay. Um, but uh, just singling you out today, and, and uh, God gave you those ears, and he gave you those ears for a reason. And uh, God bless you. You're the man. Would you stand? Tell me your name. Okay, JP. Here's what I saw. He said, I've called this man to be a shackle breaker. I have freed you to set other people free. He's got these huge chain cutters in the spirit. Some have the gift of healing. Some have the gift of this. You have the gift of cutting chains. Don't be afraid to lean back to those who are in bondage. Now, their bondage isn't real chains as far as physical ones. You, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, God has uniquely qualified you to cut their chains. Are you up to that? Open to it? Okay. May he anoint you. In Jesus' name. Hi. Can you guys stand up? I'm assuming y'all are together? Yeah, we're uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Good. Um, this is what I heard over the two of you. I heard the words steadfast, faithful, and you are both tried and true. And I see in this next season a fresh wind of the Spirit blowing over the two of you. I see the two of you being able to breathe a little bit easier, being able to feel like you're finally catching a break where there's been some striving, some lots of work, lots of tilling the ground. I really believe the Lord's going to use this next season to be able to see a harvest, to see be able to breathe, be able to see what God's doing, where God was working how he was with you in the hard times and how he's going to turn your heartbreak and make it a story, make it a testimony, make an example of how God is still present, even in our good times and our bad times, but how the two of you have maintained such a heart for God in the midst of everything that I really believe that the Lord's, not that what happened was to be used for a testimony, but because you two have not let your heart grow hard or grown weary, the Lord's going to really use you to be pillars of strength, pillars of hope for people. And I really saw that you guys come 
coming in and kind of helping do even a life group or having people in your home where you people are truly going to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in this house through the way that you guys are going to minister, the way that you're going to love, and the way that you're just going to pour out yourself on the two of you. But I just want to honor you for how you guys have maintained a heart that is tender still in the hard times. And I just really saw that this wind is going to help carry you into a place where it's going to feel a little bit of like you've finally caught a break. All right. So bless you both. Thank you. You're welcome. This uh, man with a dark t-shirt, tall man, what's your name? Matt. Matt. Is this your family? It is. All right. Do you guys love him? Good, good, good. <laughs> Matt, uh, I look back over you during worship and and I just heard the Lord say he's been through a tough winter season. Not much happening above the ground visibly, but much activity underneath in your root system. God's been down exploring your root system and making it, making you realize how strong it really is. I see tender shoots of new growth raising up now. Water, tend, fertilize it with prayer and worship. Fill your heart with thankful expectation. Prepare to receive a harvest season in August and September time. And I see a prodigal coming onto your horizon. Prepare a robe, a ring, and a feast of welcome. Your field of harvest is growing white for harvest. Be grateful. Just be grateful. uh, A new ministry to prodigals is going to rise up. You're not going to have to seek them. Sometimes you will. They're going to find you. And when you see them on the horizon, run to them. Hi, can you stand up? What's your name? Heather. Heather, what I saw over you was I saw a gift of prayer and of intercession. And I saw you having a heart for the sick and then those that are needing for someone to help believe and hold on through them in their time of desperation. And I really saw God using you to knock down doors to get them the help that they need. And I heard, Heather, you are an incredible woman because you are someone that when is given a task, you will do whatever you can in whatever strength that you have to be able to get it done. And that's the kind of person that people long for to have in their corner. And I also heard that if we had a book of heroes of people in the faith, that Heather, your name would be written in that book of faith because you really have a strong belief. And I don't know what the enemy has tried to do in your journey to tell you that you don't have enough or you don't have what it takes, but you truly are an amazing warrior in the spirit. And I just want to affirm that in you. And I really saw God bringing some people alongside of you. And once you see you opening yourself and pouring out to them and walking alongside, you're going to see God do some crazy, some incredible stuff in your life. And so the things that you're needing the Lord to come through, I believe when you get your attention off of you and start helping and looking for people that God's wanting to have you be used for, I see the Lord coming back and doing things that you're like, wait, what? I didn't even realize that. And it's going to be even sweeter because of the, you weren't searching and you weren't looking for it. And it was just in God's timing that it all came back a hundredfold on you. All right. So bless you. Hey, you guys, what are your names? Corey, Corey and Corey and Anna. Anna. I, I, I couldn't sit down when I was back there. And when you guys walked by me, um, God began to speak to me. When you walk by, I heard joy. Um, you, you love to laugh, and your laughter ministers. Um, people love being around you for that reason. And I heard this. Being at your, your place is like a vacation. Um, people like being at your place. Saw your place as a respite, like a rest um, that people come to. And I just really feel that there's something about your house, something about your place that draws folks. And 
I, I see future ministry. I don't know if, what God's been speaking to you, what God's been telling you. I feel like you've been kind of avoiding it, trying to skirt it. Maybe some things need to come into alignment before that can happen. Um, and some decisions need to be made. But I literally see God um, holding out a ministry for you. And if you want it, um, it's out there and it's available. And I don't think you can run from it. I think it's evident on your house. And so, blessings. It's your turn, big guy. Would you stand? How old are you? Eight years old. That's what I thought. Could you stand up on your chair so everyone can see you? You know, screens, uh, screens are a big deal for children and youth, and that's a big deal in a negative way. Tell me your first name. Jonas. Jonas, what a great name. I wish you all could have seen Jonas because he has his kind of monocular there. Does it film? It films also. And when you were worshiping, you were filming, weren't you? And so I, he had such intensity as he was filming worship and singing the song at the same time. And the reason I asked if he were... Eight, was eight years old is because many of you perhaps have heard of Count Zinzendorf. It's a wild name, isn't it? So on, hundreds of years ago, Count Zinzendorf lived. And when he was eight, he started a club called the Order of the Mustard Seed. And the only requirement to be in his club was that you embrace this statement. I have one passion alone, and it is Christ and him alone. So Count Zinzendorf grew up and was as big as your dad. And a group came to his house and they were being chased by people to hurt them. They were called the Moravians. And he provided a place for them. And because he provided that place, they began a prayer meeting that lasted 100 years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I want to say this to you. God has big plans for you. And he's going to use the way you see things to present them in ways that they've never been seen before. And I believe that you have that passion. And God, he, he wants to use you. Tell me your name again. Jonas. Jonas. Okay, Jonas. Heavenly Father, I pray for Jonas. That these seeds of him filming and worshiping would grow into a mighty tree of life that changes his generation. Jonas, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stay right there? Stay right there. Wait, I have a word. Please. Are these your parents? Who, who are you guys? Your aunt and uncle. Well, what you guys are going to help, this is going to be a lot for him to take in at eight. But clearly, God is wanting to set you apart because you have a creativity and a hunger and a desire to see things in a, in a bigger way. And you are so deep. You're, you're so advanced for your age. And I saw even like for those that are having to kind of crawl you in, it could be a little hard at times to figure out how do we rein him in. But I would like to encourage whoever is the one that's helping parent him and watch over him to provide the boundaries, but then to let him move so freely within those boundaries because he has a beautiful creative expression that needs room to be able to let it come alive. And I really saw him being an influencer. I saw God using, because I saw him videoing during worship and I saw the Lord saying, even at this young age, he has an eye for the things that have my eye. He has an attention to the things that are important to me. And I see him really being used in a way that he's going to capture the beauty and the rarity of the things of God and be able to present them in such a way that's going to reach a lot through the social media. So young man, just remember at this age of eight, God called you out and said, I have big plans for you. And realize that there's going to be some things you're going to not be allowed to do or some things you're going to have to pull away from. But it's not because God doesn't want the best for you. It's because he cares so much about you that he's helping put protective barriers in so you don't injure yourself along the way. All right, young man, bless you.
There's a lady right over here with, I, thought, I couldn't tell in the light if it was ginger hair or blonde hair. Is it blonde? I think ginger may mean you got a fiery disposition. Can you stand up and tell me your name? Lily. Lily? Lily of the Valley. Lily, when I looked over at you in worship, I, uh, I saw you getting a new suitcase and you were updating your passport as you wait on the Lord to pray for nations. For you do have a call to bless the nations. And I hear you prophesying destinies for the young ones God will raise up in a new revival generation. Some from other nations will come here, but you will also go there and come home. Go there and come home. Go there and come home. Be patient, but be vigilant in prayer. As a step of faith, go get a new suitcase. Get your passport updated if it needs to be. And wait for the call from God to come. Amen. Amen. Would you remain standing? Would you remain standing. If you're here tonight and you have a nation in your heart, or maybe more than one nation that just won't leave, it just stays in you, would you stand up? I just want to pray a prayer of impartation about the nations. Thank you, Father. One of my calls is to prophesy to nations, and I've been to quite a few nations. And I think in this time of, of shutdown and confinement, there's been a temptation to do that. Just shut down and confine yourself. Some of that's been appropriate. But we, we cannot keep quit going to the nations. If you have a call to the nations, seek the Lord again about when and where and how and, and who. And I believe God's going to honor you. So let me just pray a prayer of impartation. Father, I pray for everyone that's standing and has a heart for a particular nation or maybe more than one. And Lord, I just speak a word to go. Some will receive nations here, but I'm sensing an anointing to go. Father, give us the courage and the faith to step out again and to go to the nations and bless them, to prophesy over them. In Jesus' name, amen. back here. You guys, what are your names? Greg and Nancy. Greg and Nancy. Um, I saw you just standing and, you know, God's good to me because uh, that kind of confirmed what I felt like God was speaking to me. Greg and Nancy, I saw you as a couple that have birthed some things in prayer. I saw a mantle of intercession on your home. Your house is a house of prayer which is what drew you to this house of prayer. You're of like precious faith. This is a house that values prayer. Yours is a house that values prayer. And your labor has not been in vain, I assure you. And so God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. What's your name? Jessica, will you stand up? Jessica, you have a beautiful smile. Jessica, what I saw on you is I saw doubt and confusion being broken off. And I saw a heightened sense of being able to hear the voice of God becoming clearer and clearer to you. I see what was oppressing you, causing you to feel broken. I saw a renewed sense of purpose and worth being brought into focus. I see where you were once feeling um, physical pain. I saw the Lord bringing healing through the fact that you'll be releasing some of the things that you've been holding on to, that through that release, you're going to find some areas in your body that was causing physical pain because of what you really needed to release to the Lord. I heard you use your words to claim authority against the attacks of the enemy, and you're going to see a stronger resolve that's going to come out of you through all of this because you're going to see through one little bit at a time the authority that you do walk in, the authority that's yours, and how you just need to activate it and see what's going to come alive and the things that are going to be defeated in your life when you realize the power that is living on the inside of you. All right. Bless you. Oh. Uh. 
I'm looking around for him, but I don't see him. Is John Zondervan still in here? Can you stand up, young man? I heard this for you, John. Uh, smart, effective communicator. I see your voice being expanded into the city as well as the church. Your influence will serve to bless those around you in the church and beyond her walls. Strategic service opportunities will open up in timely fashion that are compatible with your day-to-day -day responsibilities. God is giving you favor in the city and in the wider community. Ideas to bless your community will cause skeptics to let their guard down and grow receptive to kingdom principles. Walk in bold humility as a bridge builder, forging paths out from the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light and life of the kingdom of Jesus. Just be at peace even as your spirit stays alert to the promptings when you sense that nudge of the Holy Spirit. You're a good man. God's promotion is overtaking you this summer. Hi. Can I bring you? Can you follow me? Are you going to leave your post? I don't know. You've, I've been noticing what a great job you're doing with the assignment they've given you. What's your name? I go by Max. You go by Max. I don't know how that's funny. That's because that's not my real name. Oh, it's not your. Well, what's your real name? My real name is Ike Chikosa de Monil. Oh, hi, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. That is a lot easier. Um, so, Max, when I saw you, I, I just heard what a man of integrity. You are a man who truly loves being in this house. And there's just such a supernatural peace, a peace and an ease that I see on you. Max, you have such a teachable heart. You're open for more of God. And I also saw a school of ministry on you. I don't know if you've walked through it, but I really saw the Lord pulling out a teaching gift, a pastoral gift, a, a mission gift on you. And I really believe that the Lord's going to use you in powerful ways that there, there's going to be times when people are like, wait, is that that same guy from Radiant? I see your platform being huge. I really see God using you as a, a, a voice to the people that are needing somebody to come and be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope. And so I just want to encourage you to find someone that can be a mentor, someone that you can have that can help guide you in the process, because there's going to be some connections that you're going to need, some other ways that you're going to need to be able to connect with the right people. And there'll be, there'll be people in this house that are going to be a vessel to be able to help you step into that. So enjoy that job back there. But there's so much more. God's bringing you into the light and the spotlight is all over you, young man. Right, is, the, uh, is the lead guitarist tonight still here somewhere? You're wearing a ball cap. There you go. What's your name? Tom. Tom? Yeah. Tom, terrific. Uh, Tom, your contribution is more powerful and more impactful than you realize. Be encouraged. When you play, sounds of healing and melodic notes of freedom spring from your instrument. You've been prophesying on your instrument and for the most part have not even been aware. I sensed an angel near you tonight, touching your hands with heaven's sounds. I think you're going to start hearing new sounds you haven't heard before. David did that. He heard sounds that there were no instruments for, so he had to make instruments to produce the sound he heard. You're going to be like that. Play what you hear beyond the page, beyond the chart, out where Jesus is waiting for you to let you hear new sounds and release heaven melodies on earth. Can you stand up? Tell me your name. Lee. Lee. So I, I got to meet Lee this morning at the other campus. And Lee, can I just tell you what a gift you are to this house? I mean, Lee, you are just so engaging with the people that come. You are so personable. 
it immediately put me at ease being in this house. And I just felt like you are probably everybody's best friend, that they just feel that you're so familiar. And I just heard that you are a good watchman for this house. I saw that you take care of God's family. And I believe because of how well that you've taken care of God's family that you're gonna see the goodness of God in your own family. And I also believe that you've got some skills that we haven't quite seen, but make you kind of like this ninja-like guy that you have a skill set for any kind of situation that may arise. And so I just want you to know how much, even if you don't get recognized, how much people notice you, how much comfort you bring to people, and how much you make a difference in their experience when they're here because you are intentional about greeting them, making them feel like they belong, and just being a friendly face that they feel like they can identify with when they walk in this house. So I just wanna honor you for that. Bless you. Awesome. Of course you have ninja skills. Your name is Lee. I mean, (laughs) what an awesome thing. I love that. Hey, let's all stand up together. Isn't it awesome tonight? To just hear the Lord speak so clearly. Uh, Oftentimes during prophetic presbytery, I'm very hesitant to step out and to give words because I'm a pastor and I know so many of you and never want to compromise that relationship or the the gift. Uh, But there are times where God speaks, uh, even to pastors. I've been in Lester's church where he stepped out and, and done that. And uh, tonight, I I just want to say how proud I am of all of you, how proud I am of this church, how Jane and I together are just so proud of not just the people in the heart of this church, but I, I felt like the Lord said tonight as I was looking around, he says, look around, Lee, because this, these are builders. These are builders. These are people that will not just come and see and watch, but they're people that will put their hands to building the walls in the city and even beyond. And oftentimes pastors get honored uh, by their people, but I want you as our people to be honored by Jane and I. Jane and I, we love you dearly. We love this church. We love all of you and all that you do for Jesus in this city. And I want you to be refreshed and I want you to be renewed. I want you to know that Jesus is good. His presence is near. His heart is towards you. His countenance is towards you. And that what you're doing, all the labor of love, all the prayer, all the service, all the generosity, all the worship, all the encouragement and support, it may go unnoticed here, but the Father sees it. And I I just saw this, that there is in this house, in this church, both houses, both campuses, of here and at Portage, there is a builder anointing. And the promise that God has to the builder is that you will never run out of resources as long as you keep your hand to building what Jesus calls us to build. So I believe that there's a provision that he's releasing, not just in your life, but in your house and in your family as a result of you being committed to building his house. Amen? So uh, we love you guys. And uh, real quick, how many of you are Portage peeps? Raise your hand if you're from Portage. All right, put your hand down. Raise your hand if you're Richland. Okay, raise your hand if you're not at all. Just you're joining, you're visiting with us. All right. (laughs) Well, we want you to know you're all radiant tonight and you're all beautiful and we love you. Father, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for encouraging us. Lord, and we pray that The words that have been spoken would be seed that finds good soil and they would take deep root in our lives and that for years and seasons to come, there will be fruit that will weigh down the branches of our life that will bring glory and honor to your name. Lord, we thank you. We love you in Jesus' name.